What's the most creative way you've seen a cantrip used? Part 1. I had a tiefling rogue who was running away from a shopkeeper he stole from down an alleyway. He asked if there were any windows on the ground level. I replied that there were, thinking he was going to try to climb in one. Instead, he used thaumaturgy to blow the window shutters open, smacking the shopkeeper in the face and knocking him on his ass. The rogue was able to get away without issue after that. What's the most creative cantrip usage you've seen? While eavesdropping slash sneaking on a group of non-playable characters whose language was not directly understood by the adventuring party, the bard used comprehend languages with minor illusion to generate translated subtitles for the rest of the group to read. That's really fucking ingenious, won't lie. My party was fighting with some bandits to retrieve a MacGuffin. After a lot of back and forth, the battle master successfully used a disarming strike to make the bandit leader drop the item, and the wizard used mold earth to bury it. The cantrip allows you to move a five foot cube of earth, so he shuffled the earth from bottom to top within the cube, placing the item five feet below the ground and out of harm's way. Level two group had to fight a water weird with no magical weapons. So, the DM let the Water Gensai Cleric use Shape Water to attack the Water Weird by tearing it apart piece by piece. The Water Weird had to make a con save versus the Gensai's innate spellcasting. This was my third game of Dungeons & Dragons ever. The freedom and creativity got me hooked. Our tiefling stole a flaming dagger from a goblin warlord, who allowed the party to live should they answer his riddle correctly. We got the answer and left, at which point the warlord demanded his dagger back, his bodyguard notching arrows ready to wipe us out. He used thaumaturgy to create dancing flames on a spare dagger he had, tossed it to the warlord who fell for it, then turned to my ranger to shout, We have 60 seconds, run like hell! A pirate tempest cleric with magic initiate, wizard who directed their parrot, Ravenstat, familiar at an enemy fighting on a ship's mast, delivering a shocking grasp through the parrot, triggering Tempest Cleric's thunderous strike feature to knock it back 10 feet into the sea without reactions. Similar idea to direct the parrot at a downed ally and to deliver cure wounds at range too. The parrot was called Thibs, both do lying with mimicry and also acting as a harm slash help defibrillator. I DM'd for a wizard who used shape water to make an ice blade out of his urine. <laughs> All right. He then proceeded to use that same cantrip to freeze water around a lock and use the force it generated to break open a cell door. Ingenious. I used minor illusion to break the party out of a mass illusion spell. My warlock with true seeing cast on himself along with the monk with blind sense, were effectively immune to the effect. But the other two party members failed their saves and perceived the rest of the party as horrific demons. And anything we did was translated to be an aggressive action. Speech became evil chittering. I attempted to write a note, which they saw as a clawed demon shredding paper menacingly. So, there was nothing we could normally do to communicate. The rogue legged it, and the bard was ready to fight back. So things were going to get messy when they started attacking, on top of the other building effects of the illusion. I cast minor illusion to project my voice so the others would hear me. And as it was not coming directly from me, it was not projected. It was a separate thing that just sounded like me. It was unaffected and was enough to help break the others from the illusion. It's also the only time I've had a cantrip counterspelled and then counterspelled said counterspell to cast a cantrip. Drow Warlock used Mage Hand to cover the periscopes on the apparatus of Qualish with his cloak. The thing couldn't see or raise its arms enough to remove it, and so either spent its actions trying to remove it pathetically or attacking with disadvantage. Then the bard cast Heat Metal on the bottom where the occupants were sitting to pilot it. I once had a high elf cleric in my party who used Ray of Frost from her racial feet to freeze a water trap shut. The water was pouring through a vent in the floor and she froze it solid, buying her and the rest of the team more time to get out of the trapped room. 
Was it overpowered for the cantrip to be used this way? Arguably so, but since it was the first session for a complete newbie to Dungeons & Dragons, I felt it quite an interesting use of said cantrip. Arcane Trickster and Princess of the Apocalypse When infiltrating the Windspire Knight, the rogue excused himself from the banquet to use the latrines. I decided they were by the side of the tower, dropping material in the canyon below. Well, the trickster used minor illusions successfully to produce the sound of explosive <laughs> diarrhea and foul smell to send away his escort. Then, Spider climbed out of the hole along the tower walls to go checking into the rooms above, and then came back and washed off with prestidigitation. It was ridiculous, but actually fairly well thought out, using his ability in a creative way, so I allowed it, and gave him some intel on the knights and their cult connections. Blair was trying to electroplate some copper with gold to create counterfeit currency, and used acid splash to create the electrolyte, and used shocking grasp connected to some wires to generate a current. The party needed to get one of the guards away from everyone else so that we could get the jump on him and interrogate him. The party wanted to wait until nightfall so that there would be less eyes and we could take a stealth approach, but my sorcerer decided it would just be easier to just cast Prestidigitation on the guy to make it look like he pissed himself. <laughs> Worked like a charm. In my group, we treat Druidcraft like a Prestidigitation for plants. Druidcraft makes medicinal herb gardening a snap. You can force seed pods to ripen, seeds to sprout, seedlings or plant cuttings to take root, and grafts to bind together. You can use it to mark or to camouflage forest trails, to sweep campsites of leaves and debris, or to twist and shape vines in order to tie lean-to shelters together, or to construct vine swings. We also use it to make decorations for parties. You can make flower garlands, change the color of leaves on the trees, put floating flowers in the punch bowl, light tiki torches, etc. This is my wizard. Long story short, I had to do a favor for a temple to resurrect a fellow party member who died at level 1. The temple sent me to the Druids, who, I was informed, had a bit of a bird problem and were killing adverse. I get to this place, and they have this giant-ass oak tree and a plot of land that's described as knee-deep in bird shit. <laughs> I asked the Druid what favor I can do for them as a return favor the temple owed them. They tell me they want the bird shit gone permanently. I estimate there's maybe 100 birds in the tree. I used sleep to put the birds out and take them off the property, where I sold them to the butcher at one silver apiece. And then, I proceeded to use prestidigitation for the better part of two days to clean off the tree and the lawn and the hut of the druids. Best way I made 510 gold. My party had to capture a saber-toothed tiger, which we did by positioning a cage at the end of a long tunnel excavated using mold earth, and an amused DM who let us spend 10 minutes slowly constructing a fragile tunnel of precariously balanced dirt. We chased the tiger into the tunnel and it was forced into the cage, then slammed the door shut. Unfortunately, our druid was subsequently revealed to be a sentient ooze, but it was fun while it lasted. I attempted to use shape water to power a canoe through a river. Just make a strip of water under the canoe flowing quick enough to move the boat, and constantly move the current you're making. Sadly, the DM just told me no. It would have been like the swamp benders in Avatar if he let me do it. I once played a war-forged cleric, so me getting across the trapdoor that made the hallway impassable was a hard challenge. To combat this, I cast Thaumaturgy while the door was opening, so it would close, since Thaumaturgy can quickly close or open a door. With the way the spell is worded, along with my good dexterity saving throw, basically, the table decided I just ran forward screaming prayers at the ground. <laughs> Guard dog at the door, press to digitate a non-magical trinket in hand, a ball. Add bacon smell, throw it into the bushes. Faded after about 12 seconds. 
first dungeon of LMOP had a wizard cast Mage Hand to untie the rope bridge on one side, causing the bridge to collapse. The goblin on top died in the fall, and they used the collapsed bridge as a ladder up the other side of the passage. As an arcane trickster, I used Minor Illusion to make a fake closed door to hide behind. This was in a cave entrance that had no natural door. The knoll who showed up was extremely confused as to where the door came from, which let me sneak attack them. Minor Illusion My gnomish arcane trickster uses it all the time to conjure the image of a box, or barrel, in the square he's standing in, basically allowing him to do that cardboard box trick from Metal Gear. One time I was playing a deep gnome in the Underdark who summoned eldritch beasts, who were actually normal conjure animals that he didn't recognize because he was raised in the Underdark. At one point he used Mold Earth to contact his deity. I doodled a picture of what the Mold Earth looked like, and one of my party members was like, It looks like a shitty bear made of mud. A what made of what? I got an inspiration point for it. Fused to a mass of powder kegs under the city was lit. All of the party members were either grappled or too far away to reach it on the last turn. New player sorcerer then casts Prestidigitation, which he points out can light or snuff small flames. I've been playing for years and didn't think of that, even though I had it too. Was thoroughly impressed. I ran a shadow monk in a campaign where our paladin was addicted to pastries. The flour was made from the bones of children, oh god, no, and he had to do daily rolls for the addiction's impact. I spent the next eight months using Minor Illusion to make pastries appear in the middle of the road, on the heads of dead enemies, in satchels, everywhere. Never got caught because all his checks had disadvantage. Then the addiction was removed. Then I got caught.